Welcome back to Molen Love, a Wargaming. We're about to review the setup for the January 7th, 1940 turn for this uh, War in the Pacific play-by-email campaign. Um, we're not changing too much from the last turn, um, getting right into China. Um, uh, we're not going to be fighting uh, over here around Canton for now. We're just going to lie low with this. Um, Wen Chao, we still need to wait for additional reinforcements. And Yang, we're waiting on reinforcement. Um, over here in this um, Twin Cities kind of region, uh, we'll just call it Kaifeng since that's on the map, uh, we are attacking there, and we are attacking on the road to Cyan. And we're actually starting to get pretty close. Um, so could have some developments there. Um, we're not ready to cross this river yet, and up in the roads we're just advancing. So uh, mostly we're just making slow, gradual progress in China. Um, nothing too spectacular going on there right now. Singapore, we're keeping the pressure on. Um, one change that I made from previous turns is I've um, kind of recombined the bomber squadrons here. I've assigned the Bettys to naval strike and the Nulls to port strike. Um, since we're not getting the, the heavy bombs to be carried into Singapore, we're not really getting the job we need done there anyways. And at the very least, we know the Repulse and at least one light cruiser are kind of loose um, last seen around Batavia. Um, so there's a bigger priority on naval strike now than there was before. Um, that said, we still want to keep the pressure on Singapore because um, if this damage report is accurate, we got the airfield up to 20% last turn, and that's up from basically nothing before then. Um, if we're doing 20% a turn, we're going to incapacitate this airbase pretty quick. Um, we don't know where the AVG went. Um, actually, yeah, we do. They went to Palembang. Um, but they could always come back. So, something we need to keep in mind. For Carrier Division 2, I'm just going to let them move through the Makazar Strait at a normal pace. Um, I, don't, I don't think I want to rush. Um, it's going to incur maintenance. Um, I like having my carriers fully fueled. <laughs> uh, no need to make them go through their fuel really fast. And then, you know what, hey, if they're detected, maybe that's when I can step on the gas um, when I'm closer to being able to get to my opponent uh, within one turn on a strike range. Um, so yeah, uh, not going to rush it there. Um, not too much to say about the Serum Sea. Um, we're dividing the Bettys up again uh, between naval attack duty and one of the squadron fragments is going to bomb Kandari, just to make sure this rather understrength unit doesn't get immediately overrun. Um, I don't think the enemy unit's strong enough to do that, but I'd rather put a little bit of pressure on them than not do anything and end up regretting it. Um, and then Mirua Myra detachment is on the way to reinforce them. So uh, that situation is going to be resolved in another turn or two. Um, Mini KB is withdrawing. Uh, they need planes. And also hopefully um, I might be able to restructure this to, um, so Suiho doesn't need it, but I think Hosha, no, Hosha doesn't need it either. Okay, never mind. Um, but I'm going to try to upgrade their aircraft, and if I can't, um, I might actually withdraw the, the Mini KB all the way back to Japan. Um, and there's some resizing operations I think I can do with, um, like float planes, well, maybe not float plane squadrons, um, but I might be able to resize some other squadrons to try to get more training going on. Um, if you're familiar with those um, setup spreadsheets, there's kind of like a step-by-step -step instructions for how to do that. Um, so I'll, I'll look over that for some advice, see if I can put some of that to use. Um, clearly, I haven't been doing that from day one, as they recommend, because uh, those carriers have been busy. But they're less busy now, so this might be a good time to do that. Um, be attacking in Davao, uh, still advancing on Butuan. Um, the tanks made it um, one hex, although I forgot to start moving them up. Um, 
I don't want to move in move mode now because an attack could come at any time in Cabantuan, and I don't want them to be subject to that attack while they're in move mode. So they're probably not going to make that move in a single day. Um, it's not the end of the world if they don't. Um, yes, I could suffer an attack. Um, hopefully, if that attack comes, my airstrikes also happen. Um, predictions only for overcast skies, so hopefully not any severe weather that's going to keep my bombers on the ground. Um, but if we manage to bomb these guys in with a great deal of force, uh, any attack they make is probably just going to collapse. And then once we eliminate them, we can get back to work on Clark. Um, and, you know, they'll be about 10,000 troops weaker than they would have otherwise been if they didn't do that. In the Solomon's Theater, I'm transporting two construction battalions from truck to Rabaul. Um, the construction battalion that was in Kaviang that was I was originally going to send to Shortlands, that's going to Rabaul too. Um, I want to put something close to maximum effort getting Rabaul up to a level 4 airfield immediately. Um, once that happens, I can move the air HQ from truck to Rabaul pretty much immediately so that Rabaul can become my kind of center hub Betty base. Uh, I mean, truck's kind of already not on the front lines anymore, right? Um, I need to make sure that my torpedo carrying Betty capability is on the front line. Uh, so that needs to happen. Um, I'm also looking to start to move some of the Naval Guard units and SNLFs that are around here. So like there's a Naval Guard unit here that's not really doing anything. That's somebody that can get involved in the Solomons. Uh, Naval Guard unit here at Jaluit, that's somebody that can get involved in the Solomons. Um, so I've got ships headed out there uh, to get some of that work. And of course in Rabaul, we kind of overloaded Rabaul uh, with SNLF and Naval Guard units. Um, so uh, any of these that aren't too weakened um, from the debacle that was the capturing of Rabaul, um, they're going to be available to start taking territory on the Solomons. Um, and we've got two task forces here right now, currently unloading. Um, when they're done, um, and that means you too, um, they're going to start distributing uh, those Naval Guard units to the Solomons. Carrier Division 3 is going to advance slightly, just enough to kind of take a peek into the shipping lane that leads to Townsville. Um, but then they're going to leave station um, covering the Port Moresby Amphibious Force, and they're going to get gassed back up. Um, and probably uh, they need to have their sorties replenished, too. I mean, how are they doing on everything else? Um, yeah, like we're more than halfway empty on sorties. Uh, we've taken some losses to the aircraft, uh, so all that needs to be replenished. Um, yeah, so we got to get those guys topped off at truck. Uh, of course, Carrier Division 1 is already on the way there. Um, so soon we'll be looking at pretty much a um, recombined Kido Butai centered around four aircraft carriers that's going to be available to basically dominate the Allies in the Solomons region. Um, yeah, so if they want to start sending the Saratoga or Yorktown around here to mess with me, uh, it's not going to go very well for them. Last bit of news, um, we have had another submarine get bombed. Um, fortunately, it was just one bomb, as opposed to the two bomb impacts like we had with that submarine off Singapore. Um, so the damage is bad, um, significant flotation damage, and unfortunately system damage over 50, which means this flotation damage is probably going to get worse before it gets better. Um, so they're ordered to return to Yokosuka for repairs, and you know hopefully that flooding damage doesn't get any worse. Um, that said, I expect the damage control teams uh, to be able to get the system damage back below 50, and then the um, flooding's going to tend to go down back towards 19. Um, obviously, well maybe not obviously if you guys don't play, um, they can't repair major flotation damage outside of port that basically represents a big gaping hole in the hull. 
Uh, so it's not something the crew can do by themselves. All right, so that's going to do it. I'll close this out, and we'll see you for the combat replay. Thanks for watching. And we're back. Combat replay for January 7th, 1942, now in progress. So it isn't going to be apparent to anyone watching on YouTube, but we actually had a little bit of a hiatus here. Um, it's probably been three or four days since I completed this turn uh, to when uh, my opponent completed his turn and sent this over to me. Um, so if I forget anything that I did during the setup, um, <laughs> please forgive me because memory is going to be a bit of an issue probably. I think real life was just getting in the way for him. We usually try to do one a day. Alright, somebody's sinking and it's not one of mine. Alright, our sub chasers have caught this Dutch sub off Singora. I don't remember if this is going to be the same one that we damaged before. Um, we're getting a lot of damage and near misses on him. There we go, a real hit. Reported with heavy damage. That's a good sign. I wouldn't have expected heavy damage from one solid hit. Um, so this might be the same one that we hit before. Um, in which case, if it was already damaged and took another barrage like this, it's probably a goner. One of these days, we'll start sinking those subs off Tokyo. Pretty good, plenty of escorts for this. Of course, we lost one right off the bat. We got a lot of planes through, but we didn't have a lot of accuracy. And I think the accuracy is being degraded by the fact that enemy planes got through and attacked the bombers. Um, which, of course, is really disappointing because we outnumbered their fighters 3 to 1. And they just, once again, walked right past our escorting fighters and attacked the bombers anyways. Oh boy. All the stage HDMLs. I guess I should be happy we're not wasting torpedoes on this. Well, I suspect our accuracy would be better. Oh boy. So the enemy has apparently divided up their cap between Singapore and... Tobali or possibly Palembang, and this is just part of their count Palembang cap. Uh, 
not sure what ships these are going to be. Hopefully we get through and we find out. Uh, this is pretty significant fighter presence. Unfortunately, most of them are buffaloes. At least for now. Maybe those uh, AVG P-40s are going to increase in number as this fight goes on. I think I've lost 4-0 so far, and I could be mistaken, but I think they've all been to Buffaloes. It's just weird. There's another one. Good news is this time we've Reduce the enemy fighters to basically nothing. Yeah, okay. So, no attacks on the bombers, so hopefully this will be an accurate attack. And we once again have HTMLs dead in the water. So that seems kind of pointless. There's a lot of enemy fighter coverage for a lot of ships that really weren't all that important. But at least I guess we got our question answered about what's more accurate. Um, bombing or torpedoing very small ships that are dead in the water. Uh, so this is an airfield attack in heavy rain. And we did no damage. Uh, no damage in thunderstorms at Kandari. So this was an important mission. Um, bombing these enemy soldiers in the open. Uh, we've disabled three combat squads, which is significant. Uh, only moderate rain in this hex, so slightly better weather than at Clark. And here's the big strike, still moderate rain. Seeing severe fires in the animation. Good sign. Uh, 15 combat squads disabled, plus 5 vehicles lost. Um, I wouldn't say that's great, but considering the weather, I guess it's as good as we can do. Okay, that was better. That's a smaller strike. Uh, 16 more combat squads destroyed or disabled. Same core again. Caps are really weak at this point. Mm. Heavy rain. Wow, just four airbase hits with 25 aircraft. That was pretty sad. I guess I should be happy I destroyed a bomber on the ground, hopefully damaged a few others. And of course the sweep arrives last. I think probably the best thing we can do in Singapore is just keep trying to disable that airbase to make sure that enemy aircraft can't come back. Alright, well these guys walked right in. Getting a lot of flak damage. 
one run runway hit for 21 aircraft. I think maybe what I need to do is sweep on bad weather days and bomb on good weather days. Not that the forecasts are all that accurate. We had severe storms on a day with, that was predicted to be clear skies not too long ago. I wonder how many of these sightings are real. Hey, we actually used torpedoes this time. Yeah, so no question, uh, better accuracy using torpedoes than bombs. I swear it's raining everywhere in the Pacific today. Hudson's probably flying out of Makazar. Uh, lose one out of three. No hits. Not even sure where that one zero came from. It's still Dutch, at least one Dutch sub off the Catabo coast. I don't know why we haven't been able to attack them, since they're just staying there. Alright, got an attack on the road to Cyan. Another retreat. Ooh. Pretty good casualty numbers here. Now attacking Deval. Tank regiments versus infantry battalions. Oh, and there were P-40s here. Not bad. Not bad at all. Unfortunately, these enemy troops retreated instead of surrendered. Basically attacking nothing units outside of Nanchang. Basically get some free casualties inflicted on the enemy. Alright, can we dislodge this enemy unit that crossed the river next to Kaifeng? Uh, not yet. Not yet. And we did get the worst of this attempt, unfortunately, but not by that much. Um, yeah, it's going to be worth uh, resting a bit, healing a bit, seeing if we can uh, get some additional forces here and maybe wear these guys down a little bit before attacking again. Imagine the reason this is a bombardment attack is because I'm still waiting on additional reinforcements. Yeah, 828. I would want more than 1600, and that hacks. I'm clearly waiting here. I do not have enough for here. Not even close. This is a significant enemy force that's holding out here. Um, significant enough that I just might not be able to do this anytime soon. Kandari 
it sure looks like we're going to need more troops. <laughs> oh, yeah, these guys are uh, in really bad shape. Okay, coat of is at size 7. I'm, you know, keep getting plagued with coordination problems and bigger airfields help. everyone that's going to do it for the January 7th turn I'm gonna make a little bit of a formatting change for this turn uh, instead of a post turn analysis at the end um, and then doing a setup you know at the beginning of, the, of next turn I'm gonna combine the two uh, so that's gonna be in the next video um, we can you know quickly go over uh, the results and then review the setup because I, th I think there's been a lot of redundancy between you know, doing the post turn analysis and then also having a setup. We go over a lot of the same stuff. Um, so, to, and th the length of these videos is getting too long, too. Like, a lot of the recent ones have been over an hour. Um, so, I'm going to cut down on that. So, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, see you for the January 8th setup on the next video. Thanks for watching.